It's exciting to visualize and build that setup for editing and color grading that you've been dreaming of. Or it may be time for an upgrade. Well, here are the top five studio mods for a low budget dream setup. I've prepared for you a shopping list, but bear in mind, these are not affiliate links and nobody sponsored me or paid me in suggesting these items. These are items I've already used in my setup or purchases that I'm currently considering. So at number one, the computer. Now, this is obviously the heart and brains of the whole operation, but the first question you need to ask yourself is, are you a Mac or a PC guy? We'll be looking at options for both. Building a Windows PC is seen as a cheap alternative, especially because it gets you lots of customizable options and you learn some things along the way. However, if you're not as technically inclined and you'd rather save the time, which time is also money, we're gonna cover a couple pre-build options and if you still wanna build your own, you can just make note of the parts on the pre-builds and build something similar. The price point we're aiming at that really gives you what you need so you don't have a computer that struggles is around $2,000. Now, of course, you can go for something cheaper, but I find this is the sweet spot between performance and value, and you should be able to tackle most projects without compromise. First up is Asus Pro Art Station PD5 Workstation at $1,999. It includes a Core i7 processor, perfect for most editing needs. 32 gigs of RAM, which is really the sweet spot. I mean, you could get away with 16 gigs of RAM as a bare minimum, but I would highly recommend 32 gigs for that extra legroom. It includes an NVIDIA RTX 3070 graphics card with eight gigs of VRAM, which will handle most VFX, color grading, and render work you'll ever do and a one terabyte NVMe SSD system drive. SSD as your system drive is a must, otherwise, no matter how great the other components are, a slow drive will be a bottleneck. Now you might be wondering, why don't I recommend a two terabyte or larger? Well, we'll get to that in just a minute, but I always recommend at least one terabyte for the system drive. On the Apple side of things, the alternative is the Mac Studio M1 Max. For $2,199, it gets you the M1 Max chip with a 10-core CPU, 24-core GPU, and 16-core neural engine. You get 32 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD drive. If you've been following Apple's development of Apple Silicon, you'll know this represents a true game changer in computing and people are loving their new M1 Max. Number two, storage. That one terabyte internal drive is gonna fill up fast. So you're gonna need an external drive or drives for your project. Now, what you select here will depend on the type of project you're working on. If you're editing small videos and personal projects, they'll fit on an external SSD. But if you're getting lots of work, needing quick access to all the projects on OneDrive, or working on a film or television series, you'll need to take storage seriously and so will your wallet. For that, you'll need a hard drive RAID array, which is basically a bunch of drives connected together and working on a single drive. RAID gives you more storage space and speed, plus the extra added benefit of redundancy, so if one drive goes out, you just replace it and you're up and running again. If you just need to get started, the external SSD drive I would recommend is the Samsung T7, and at two terabytes, it's just $219. Now, I just wanna make a quick point that I recommend this solid state memory or SSD over spinning drives as they're more reliable and the read write speeds are much faster. Too often I see people struggling with dropped frames when they're trying to play back 4K video and it's most oftentimes due to a slower drive and or they don't have it connected with the best cable like Thunderbolt or USB-C. So just keep in mind that speed is a major factor. In terms of RAID array enclosures, we have been using the SanDisk Professional G-RAID Shuttle RAID arrays for several years now, and I totally recommend them. The four bay version with 24 terabytes will cost you $2,099. Purchasing storage is not exciting. It's kind of like paying taxes, getting your teeth cleaned, or voting in a general election. It's not fun, but it's super important, so don't skip here. Number three, computer monitor. 
You need a decent computer monitor if you're not buying a dedicated grading monitor. Just about any monitor nowadays will cover most of the color space that you'll be working in. If you're only delivering to the web or broadcast, you need a monitor that covers 98 to 100% of the sRGB and Rec. 709 color spaces. And in terms of brightness, although SDR maxes out at 100 nits, I find that 350 nits is a good starting point. If a company doesn't divulge these details, it's probably not a good monitor. The one I recommend for getting started is the LG 27BL8 5U-W. That's a mouthful. It's a great 27-inch monitor for only $429. It's advertised as an HDR monitor, but that's only for the playing back of HDR clips. For editing slash grading, I would consider it just for SDR. It covers 99% of the sRGB color space, has a 10-bit panel, which means a billion colors, 350-nit brightness, and 4K resolution. At some point, all monitors must be calibrated for color critical work, and for that, I recommend the Calibrite Color Checker Display Pro at $279. If you want to ensure color accuracy and be confident that what you're looking at is accurate, then calibrate your monitor using one of these. If you're shooting for HDR delivery, although a lot of monitors claim to have it, those are meant for only viewing shows, films, or YouTube, and most often don't meet the specs for grading high dynamic range footage. HDR monitors that cover close to 100% of the P3 color space and can sustain 1,000 nits across the whole screen are quite expensive. So I wouldn't consider one as part of a low budget suite. However, there is one that is modestly priced relative to what you're getting and is spec for working in HDR, and that is the Asus ProArt Display PA32UCG-K, another long one. It'll set you back $4,844, but also includes its own calibration pro. Now, one thing to think of when considering these higher priced post-production tools is, I mean, you wouldn't hesitate to drop that kind of coin on, say, a Canon R5 or a Sony FX3 with a kit lens. So I think perspective is important. And after all, this is how you're viewing your footage with said camera. Now, if you do see yourself entering your career as a dedicated colorist, then you will want to have a dedicated color grading monitor as number four. Now you may ask, why does it have to be dedicated? Although I find a decent computer monitor can do the job for web delivery and even broadcast, if you are delivering to more color spaces or the client requires you to meet very high standards, the only way to be 100% sure that what you're seeing on the screen is accurate is to monitor a clean signal through a reference grading monitor. That means there's no risk that settings on the computer monitor or the operating system are doing anything funky to the image. A reference grading monitor will give you a level of control over the settings that no other monitors have. The signal will come directly from your editing or grading software through an output card via an SDI connection, which ensures the highest quality signal. A cheap but reliable option is a Blackmagic Design PCI output card for your PC, like the Decklink Mini Monitor 4K that costs just $195 and you install this in your computer. If you don't have the card space inside your computer or you went with the Mac Studio option, an external one like the Ultra Studio Monitor is $125, though it's limited to only HD output. If you need 4K, then you'll need to go with the much more expensive solution, the Ultra Studio 4K Mini at $1,055. But as you can see, it's fancier with an LCD display justifying its higher cost. In terms of the reference grade monitor itself, if you're only grading for SDR, a very common popular option is the LG OLED C-Line. They can do HDR for viewing a show, but not so much for mastering one. They can, however, be pretty accurate in SDR after a proper calibration. And for their size, they're great as a client monitor for when you have four people watching you work your magic. But being a TV, it is limited to HDMI. The LG C242 inch version is priced at $1,246. Now, if you wanna get more serious and you have the means, then one of the most popular go-to monitors on the market for this line of work is the Flanders Scientific. Their DM series offer great professional monitors for grading SDR of all sizes. Plus, if you're starting to experiment with HDR, the newer models have a great HDR feature where they simulate the HDR grade in an SDR panel. A popular model is the DM241 at $4,095.
Now, let's keep things in perspective. Unless you're doing work for Netflix and you need to meet their rigid HDR specs, a grading setup with the FSI will be more than adequate. And number five, control panels. Now, first, a little disclaimer. You don't need any of this to edit or grade professionally. However, if you're coming into a lot of work or you just want to treat yourself and have a cool looking yet functional setup, then this makes for a Merry Christmas. First up is the Elgato Stream Deck Extra Large for $209. What this does is it gives you a set of 32 programmable LCD keys. This is helpful because it allows you to quickly jump between different workspaces, select tools, apply specific effects with the press of a button. If you can think of it, you can program it. I can't begin to tell you how cool this is for working with editing and grading software. And if you need to step up to a full color grading panel, a great entry that gives you color balls that controls the color wheels, there is the Tangent Ripple. It's budget friendly at $332. If you're grading in DaVinci Resolve and want a panel with more controls, you can go with the Resolve Micro Panel that only costs $859 and comes with a Resolve Studio license, which sells separately for $295. So this really is a great value. So, so far we've talked about gear to have in your dream setup. But what about the software? Well, you've probably already chosen your editing and grading software, be it Premiere Pro, Final Cut Pro, or DaVinci Resolve. But what about taking the capability of these programs further? What kinds of plugins might you have to make life easier and to bring new levels of creativity to your work? Well, ever since my first days of riding a bike, I always wanted a motor. <laughs> Just kidding, ever since my first days figuring out color grading, I always wanted to be able to reach in, click and change things right inside the viewer. I felt like taking my eyes off the viewer to adjust the control was distracting and so I thought there has to be a better way. Well, that was the inspiration behind CinemaGrade, which is a plugin aimed at content creators and filmmakers who don't have the time to specialize as a colorist, but still need to get professional looking results. You can see how easy this is with on-screen color grading, Lightroom style controls, false color mode for getting the right exposure, easy shot matching for your footage, and real-time previews of LUTs. It works as a plugin inside of Adobe Premiere Final Cut Pro, and DaVinci Resolve on both Mac and Windows. You'll find a link for CinemaGrade in the description below, and because you've made it this far, you can get 20% off of CinemaGrade for a limited time with discount code YouTube20 at checkout. Add CinemaGrade to these five studio mods for a dream setup. Let me know if you have any questions about any of these items, or if I left something out, I'd really like to hear from you in the comments. To get more videos like this, click the subscribe button and then the bell to be notified of our next one. Let's make cinema quality video.